Hi everyone, it's Liam here from Rating the Races. So we've got racing tomorrow at, well, loads of different courses. What have we got? Sandown, Haydock, Beverly, Nace, Leicester, Bellystown, Nottingham and Carlisle. Um, so lots to get stuck into. Um, and let's go through my thoughts for some of the racing tomorrow. Starting off at a lesser track. So normally on Fridays, Saturdays, all the feature races, I tend to stick to the feature racing. Um, but if there's a few that catch my eye at lower tracks, then I do, um, you know, I do look at all of the racing, not just those that are going to be on TV, for example, you know, on ITV or, um, you know, the feature races. I will look elsewhere. And I'm actually starting off with a class four handicap at Haydock. Horse that's really caught my eye here um, is Curious Rover uh, for Katie Scott and um, Ursa Major. Now, Ursa Major, I think I've actually had four win winners um, recently with Katie Scott. Um, that's not what really catches my eye. Um, trainers' records with owners is relatively irrelevant, really. Um, but who do I like? Uh, or why do I like Curious Rover? So I think the horse is starting to drop to a decent mark. So after winning um, last season at Haydock, where where he goes again, he or she, it is a he, yes, where he goes again, um, then ran a couple of good races at York and Newcastle off marks of 81 and 85. Returned this season off 88, and that's probably just been what's beating the horse um, probably too high. Well beaten off 88, well beaten off 87, a bit better off 84, much better off 82. And interestingly, I think that was a really good effort finishing third behind Copper Knight and Dicky Bird. Copper Knight at Chester um, had dropped in the handicap, um, was had everything right for him that day. I think we tipped him up that day, or at least um, put him as one of my naps, and he did win. Dicky Bird um, had been running uh, relatively well as well uh, coming into that. Um, including a second at Nottingham a few runs before that. So I just felt the form there was really strong. And it was a better race than this. This is down to a class four. That was a class three. Curious Rover ran a good race. And now, off the back of a good race, returns to Haydock, where he was very impressive last year, albeit in a four-runner um, nursery. He won by five lengths, though, and he comfortably, you know, travelled well, quickened away well. That came off 87. He runs off 80. Uh, that came off 77, sorry. He runs off 81. I think this is about his mark that he can get involved in these types of races. Um, we saw that he already ran well off 82. He's dropped a pound for a very good run. I see no reason why he doesn't run another big race here um, back at a track that he likes. I think the thing that really caught my eye here was the betting forecast. They've got him at fives. Yes, please. If we can get fives, I'll be delighted with that. Um, anything above, I think anything above three to one, personally, I think he would go, uh, w would be a bet. Let's just have a look. No, you can see there's no prices currently for Curious Rover. But if they do price him up as suggested, then I think he's a great price, to be honest. Um, he is the only course and distance winner in the race. We know he likes the track. We know he's back in form off this sort of mark. Um, I think there's plenty to like about him. And as I said, the trainer's done it right recently, um, particularly with horses owned by these owners. So moving on to the 150 at Haydock. So this is a better race, um, a group three. And you can see who I like here. It's living the dream. I still believe living the dream is a group one horse um i think the horse is being aimed at returning for that nunthorpe uh, was it the nunthorpe yes it was the nunthorpe aiming for the nunthorpe um went to Haydock at the beginning of the season finished second to kurdos um i actually made a post that day saying is is it living the dream or asfura that's the proper group one horse in the race um we were on asfura that day disappointed, well, finished fourth, and then went to Royal Ascot and won. That's the form that I think is the strong form. Um, yes, very disappointing next time out living the dream at Haydock in a listed race. Maybe things didn't quite go uh, to plan, stumbled at the start, um, and that just might have put him off his stride early on. I'm hoping he can bounce back from that. This is only a group three, and... Real positive, I think. Um, the horse has been to Sandown before. Has beaten Auditor. 
by three and a quarter lengths in a handicap and was second to Mitt Barhi in a listed race in the Scurry Stakes. Um, Mitt Barhi's kind of suggesting that he's probably Group 1 or at least Group 2 uh, quality, running some decent races. He's won at the Curra. He won the Group 2 at the Curra. Um, so that second to that horse was, was a good effort in itself. Um, and yeah, I just feel that um, this is this is definitely a dropping class for Living the Dream. They're, they're clearly trying to get him ready for the Nunthorpe, but I think he can win this en route against what I think are handicappers and group horse, uh, group handicappers and listed horses, maybe a couple of group threes. I can understand why Twilight Calls is the second favourite. Let's just load up the odds for this. We do have odds for this. I can see why Twilight Calls is second favourite because he does have group one form. Um, but it's a long time since he's actually gone close to winning a race. In actual fact, it was back in As uh, Ascot in 2022. Granted, that was a Group 1. Um, but then the last win was actually April 2022 in a handicap. I just think he's very tricky to get right. Um, I think Living the Dream is just a bounce out. Sandown should really suit in that sense. Bounce out, go forward, make all the running, hang on. Um, so at 5-2, to two, I think that's a fair price about Living the Dream. Moving on to the 205 at Haydock, uh, the one mile six handicap for three year olds. Now, I have a feeling, I'm hoping that I've got this horse right. It's games people play. Now, she is one of two fillies in the race. Um, that's not really that interesting. What I do think is interesting is I've always associated these owners with getting horses that can run well. And they kind of start them over the wrong distance. They start them over seven. They run them over a, a mile. Then they win over a mile and two. Then they step up to a mile and four and they win again. They step up again. They go up to a mile and six and they win again. Now, it kind of hasn't worked for games people play. They had a couple of good runs last season. Came back this season, finished third over a mile and two when sent off eight to one. And then last time out was sent off the three to one favor over a mile and two again at Sandown. But I think the fact that it went off the 3-1 to favourite off a mark of 81, Connections believe that there is more to come from this horse. And I think they've gone, it's not working over a mile and two. We looked outpaced. We haven't got the pace to, to keep up over a mile and two. We're going to have to do our next plan of action now. And they've given it a massive step up in trip. She's gone up four furlongs to a mile and six. They've also put the cheek pieces on. And... I really believe that this could be the difference to uh I think games people play is better than better than a eighty rated Philly and I think they've they've kind of rushed her up because it hasn't been working over a mile and two. I think if they had won a couple of races over a mile and two they would have stayed there, kept going up, winning races, going up the handicap to eighty five, ninety, and then when she looks like she can't win over a mile and two, they go up to a mile and four. And then up to a mile and six. But I kind of feel that they've they've jumped up to a mile and six now. It's a race worth winning. It's 51 grand to the winner. And um, yeah, I, I think the fact that it's gone off, it's gone off, it's been beaten favourite twice now, I think. Yeah, it went off 15 to eight after only finishing third at Goodwood in a novice stakes. It went off 15 to eight favourite next time out. They really believe this horse has plenty of ability. Um, and yeah, I think an 80 mark... If she's going to win a handicap, it's probably going to be tomorrow. So I was quite keen to take a bit of a chance on her at... Uh, let's have a look what price they are now quoting. Yeah, 14 to 1. I'm prepared to take a chance on games that people play at 14 to 1. We move on to the 225 at Sandown. Um, the Coral Challenge. And there's two horses I like here. I'm only going to go for one, and I'm hoping the other one doesn't come back to bite me. So, the horse I'm actually going to go for is Holloway Boy. Holloway Boy was one of our Royal, I Royal Ascot eyecatchers. Finished third in the Royal Hunt Cup. Did not get a run at all. If he'd got a run, I think he goes really close, if not winning the race. That came off a mark of 105, stays of 105. There's no reason to suggest the horse doesn't go close. Um... If we look back through some of his form, 
I don't actually know. I think we've gone over this before. Third in the conditions race. Fourth in a listed. Fourth in a group three. Uh, ninth in a group one. Third in a group one. Third in a group three. Second in a group three. Second in a group two. And winning a listed race. So, you know, they 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 know that the horse has ability. They've been running him in better races. They finally dropped back to handicap company last time out for the Royal Hunt Cup. And I think would have won with a clear run. There's no reason to desert him if you were on him uh, in the Royal Hunt Cup. You'd, you'd be hopeful that he gets a clearer run here. The one I am worried about is Classic. Is our good friend Classic. Is very tricky um, to get right. Didn't quite get for get there for us last time at uh, Sandown. I'm hoping he finds... I'm hoping that Holloway Boy is actually a group horse running in a handicap and would have won comfortably off 105 in the uh, Royal Hunt Cup or would have won the Royal Hunt Cup off 105. Classic runs off 93. He's probably rate, you know better than that. But maybe Holloway Boy is just still significantly better than that. Maybe Holloway Boy is £5 better and Classic is one or two. That's kind of my angle in this race. Um... And I'm, yeah, I think the prices also help me push towards uh, Holloway Boy. I'm surprised Holloway Boy is as big as he is. I thought he was one of the biggest eye catchers at Royal Ascot behind Fresh. Holloway Boy was, was probably one of the next. And you can currently get 15 to 2, 7 to 1 about Holloway Boy. Having deserted one of my horses in Classic in the last race, this time we're sticking with the horse that I uh, have backed a few times, and that's Laia Kell. Laia Kell, the fact that they're returning in a 77 grand handicap and sticking to handicap company, I think demonstrates that they still believe they've got more to, more to um, come and they can win a handicap before ending up in group races at the end of the season. Very lightly raced. Um, ended last season going quite well, eventually uh, winning at Doncaster, beating Simply Sondheim, and then going to York and finishing second in a handicap behind Certain Lad. Now, I think that form was quite good. Certain Lad has come out and done well since, um, went to Doncaster after that, off a £5 higher mark and won, has since won a listed race at Compiègne, finished fourth behind Hamish in a Group 3, and finished second in a Group 3 behind Royal Rhyme. So, the horse is now rated 112, beat Laia Kell off 100. Laia Kell was rated 99, returns here off 100. So Laia Kell's up 1, certain lad is up 12. Would that have been enough to switch that around? It would have been a lot closer. Laia Kell went off favourite, certain lad went off second favourite. Everything, you know, the right horses came to the fore. Um, yeah, I think I'm willing to give Laia Kell another go here. Granted, he may need the run and they may end up you know, ending up winning listed races somewhere else. Um, but I think they will... He's been entered in a couple of races. They've not taken their chance. They've not just run in a race that they didn't think would suit or the ground had gone against him on the basis that, actually, we're going to need the run anyway, so we won't bother running him. They've taken him out, which I think is, is key for me. If they'd ran him... And he'd got that run and disappointed you would have gone, well, it's because they ran him on ground that he didn't want. But they've obviously waited and gone, well, we won't waste our effort. We think he's well handicapped. We think we can win a big handicap first. Um, so, yeah, Laia Kell is my selection in the 315. Let's have a look what price about Laia Kell. I think he's second favourite. He is, and you can currently get comfortably fives, sixes at William Hill. Off to Nace. Uh, don't often find things at Nace. Off to Nace for a selection. Um, the forecast is 8 to 1. Really? That would be lovely. Let's see. If I very much doubt they've uh, priced up anything yet for Nace. They haven't. Magical Vision. Really like Magical Vision. I think um, I think she's very interesting. Come back this season... Great bit of form. Finished third to Stagnite. That was a good effort um, after 146 days off the track before then going to the Curra and winning a sprint handicap of 75. Granted, gone up £7, but I thought she won it um, very comfortably. And she beat the favourite in half a minute. She beat the right two horses, in my opinion, in that race. 
I think that's always key to form. When a horse wins a race, who do they beat? If they they beat a twenty five to one shot and a thirty three to one shot, I always put a question mark by the form. Maybe the the, the big rivals, you know, didn't didn't perform and it was an easier race and and they won it despite um, conditions or despite you know it wasn't going to be as strong a form. Whereas I think this was strong form from Magical Vision. Um, this is a bit of a chancy one because. The ground is completely different to what she normally runs on. She normally runs on soft and heavy. They're running her on good. Are they running her on good to get her handicap mark back down? Or are they running her on good because actually they've been, you know, they, they feel that good is fine, but um, they've just been winning on soft and heavy despite the conditions. Yeah, I, I'm really hopeful of a, of a big run, to be honest, from Magical Vision. Um, trip is fine. Yeah, I, 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 the only, that was the only negative, was the ground. Um, she's also back to Nace, where she is actually currently two from two, including last time out, um, beating Mickey the Steel, when I think she idled badly late on. That only came off 72, I know she's off 82. Um, Chris has ridden her a couple of times, one, two, three, four times, so he knows how to ride the horse as well. Um, and yeah, I'm very hopeful of a big run from Magical Vision at Nace. As I said, the forecast of eight, I think that's all about the ground. If she handles the ground, I think she goes very close here. Three more, starting off uh, looking at Beverly, the four o'clock at Beverly. So another, um, not the biggest race, not the best race, it's class five handicap. Uh, the horse that catches my eye here is a Bear With. So I thought Bear With's effort last time out. Uh, behind Glistening Knights, who came into the race off the back of a win at Weatherby, um, and in front of Sister and Brother, who had come into the race off the back of two wins at Haydock and Nottingham, a third at Doncaster and a second at Bath. In other words, really strong form. Um, bear with, split those. Stays off the same sort of... Um, same class of race, it's still a class uh, 5. Runs off 72 instead of 70, 70. So gone up £2 for that. But I think that's fair. And I think these are these are pretty average horses, to be honest. I think these are not very good um, rivals here. Another positive about Bear With returns to Beverly. Uh, last time she ran at Beverly, she ran at Beverly. Last time he ran at Beverly, won a handicap by five lengths um, over a mile and two. Over this course and distance, comfortably won it. Yes, that was off 61 and she's running off 72. But I think um, there's so much to like about Bear With. In form, split to uh, progressive or well uh, in form horses last time out of Doncaster. Returns to a track she's won at. He's won at, sorry. Um, returns to a track he's won at. And hopefully the forecast price of fives. Um, comes to fruition. I would be very happy with that. Let's just have a look. I doubt there is any odds yet. There's not. But yeah, I'm, I'm really hopeful for a big run from Bear With back at a course we know the horse uh, can perform at. Two to go. Uh, 4.25 at Haydock. We've definitely backed this horse at least once, if not twice in our videos. Um, it's Boardman. Now, he has dropped to a mark of 89. This time last year... He was actually running off a mark of 103 in this race, actually. 103, I'm just having a look. Yeah, 103 in this race. Finished last of seven. Only went off 17 to 2 that day. Returns here off 89. He's very, very well handicapped this year. Um, and I think he's just starting to get back to towards some of his, his good form. I didn't think his effort last time out was that bad. When he was sixth, when he didn't get the clearest of runs under David Allen, sixth at York in a um, class three race. Yes, this is a class two, but I don't think it's a strong class two. Boardman has won here. He doesn't win very often. He doesn't win at many tracks, but he has at least won here. He beat Al Reb off a mark of 90, and I think that's a, a key as well. He won off 90. He runs off 89. When he's been uh, back to Haydock, he's run off a uh, 99. He's run off 100, he's run off 98, 103, 103, 
98 and 96. He's back down to a mark that I think he can be very competitive off, 89. He's won off 90. Um, what's to stop him now from winning off 89? That I, I think it's his handicap mark that's been probably stopping him from getting really close, um, as well as not always getting the clearest of runs, but at least he showed a little bit last time out off 90, and maybe that was, if he'd got a clear run, he would have gone close, and if he would have gone close off 90, he should go closer off 89. So that is uh, my selection in the 425. They're currently pricing up. They're going 13 to 2 Boardman. Yeah, if we can get about that, I'll be happy with that. And finally, last one in the 447 at Sandown, the 1 mile 2 handicap, class 2. Um, Stay well has caught my eye here. Some some recent good bits of form on the all weather. Finished third to Wadaka Gomez um, at Chelmsford before last time out, finishing second to Enj- Enfijar. Enfijar, is that what you say? Who was the six to four favourite? One of these really unexposed um, Shadwell Estate horses. Very impressive win. Um, Stay well probably had no chance there. Stays off the same mark. Actually beat Wadeka Gomez in that race as well. Um, and it's his run back at Sandown that really catches my eye. He was third, not getting the clearest of runs, um, behind Dual Identity and Certain Lad. Now, Dual Identity was winning off 87 that day. He's now rated 98 um, and has since uh, recently won at Sandown and finished third at Sandown behind Two Tempting and Classic. So good bits of form uh, back at Sandown. So Dual Identity clearly appreciated going back to Sandown. Certain Lad had finished second. He's come out and done well since, as I've mentioned uh, previously. He was rated 101 that day when he finished second to Dual Identity. He's beaten Laya Cow. He's beaten Mustazid. He's finished fourth in a Group 3, second in a Group uh, 3, and then won a listed race at Compiègne. So the first two in front of Staywell at Sandown um, in September were two horses that were just better than him, you know, and were comfortably better than him, and are, whatever they are, 10, 11 pounds higher, and 8 pounds higher than what they were. Stay Well is actually 3 pounds lower, for a very good run, um, in a good race. I don't see any reason why uh, Stay Well can't run another big race here, it's uh, the type of race should suit, he, he likes to be held up out the back, and, and hopefully swing wide, come down the centre of the track, David Egan uh, rides. Huey Morrison has a good record at the track. Um, yeah, I think there's there's plenty to like about Staywell, and I was surprised at the price again. I thought he would be a little bit shorter. Um, he kind of interests me at the price. Let's have a look. What is he? Ah, let me just pause that whilst I load up another screen so I can see the odds. There we go. Um, we have got stay well. You can get twelves just. You can get tens. You'll probably get elevens uh, in time when they price up a few more. But yeah, I'm I'm really hopeful of a big run from stay well there. I think returning to Sandown where he ran well, he's come into it off the back of a decent effort behind um, a well fancied Enfijar. Um, I think he's back to a mark that he can go well off, and returning to the turf will be no issues. Um, particularly at Sandown over this trip. So they're my selections for uh, Saturday. Let's go through them quickly again. Curious Rover at Haydock, back at Haydock, in form, drops in class, uh, forecast price of 5-1 to one is very interesting. Live in the Dream, I think he's a proper Group 1 horse. Um, I think the others are not. Uh, yeah, I think as long as he jumps out nicely, he can go well. He has also won at the track. Two o'clock, games people play. I think the step up in trip is the key here. Step up in trip and what did I say? They've got put on cheek pieces, was it? Uh, Just having a quick look. Was it cheek pieces? It was indeed cheek pieces. Um, I think that's key. 14's about games people play. Holloway Boy, very unlucky in the Royal Hunt Cup. I think he's a group horse able to get in a handicap, would have gone close in the Royal Hunt Cup with a clear run. Laya Kell, that form behind a certain lad was good form. Um, I think they've waited for this and they've made sure that everything was right before returning rather than running him thinking that 
on the basis that he might not be fit, we might as well run him. They've not done that. They Hopefully they've waited for a race where conditions are perfect. Magical Vision at Nace. The ground is the issue. If the ground uh, isn't an issue, I think Magical Vision can win again. Um, a very, very good effort last time out. And has won at the track before. Uh, Beverly, bear with. Again, a really good effort last time out. Back to a... Back to a course that he runs well at. Boardman has won at the track. Doesn't win often. Is down to a handicap mark. I think he can go well off though. Um, didn't get the clearest of runs last time out. If he did, I think he would have gone much closer anyway. Probably this is his handicap mark um, that he can run well off. He's won off 90. He runs off 89. And finally, the last one is Staywell, who I think returning to Sandown will be key. Um, returning to Sandown, that form behind certain lad and uh, who was second? I've forgotten. Dual identity, sorry, and certain lad. I think was very good form. Is actually lower in the weights now, um, and a decent effort last time out behind a very well handicapped horse. Thanks for listening. Hopefully, lots of winners. Um, and yeah, do do remember to get involved in the nap competition. It's free to enter, and there's prizes to be won each and every week um and i know a lot of our recent winners have received their winners mugs today they also won cash and free bets and they've all been credited or um sent to them so yeah do get involved in our free nap competition